Here we are in Minnesota, folks. We're getting ready to uh, do a little grouse and woodcock hunting. It's going to be a public land hunt. Um, everybody's talking about public lands after a lot of the politicians wanted to go off and sell sell a lot of our assets in the last couple of years. It's late September, but we've had an uncommon long summer. It's been very hot, very humid. We've had days with humidity up in the 70s. And what that does in the woods, it just, all the vegetation just flourishes. So, I got some fiocchi shells here. And the point about the vegetation, I got two options. 20 gauge, uh, Denny's gonna shoot a 28, Mark and I are gonna shoot 20s. First option, it's a little bit lighter load. Seven eighths ounce, seven and a half shot. Um, great woodcock load. And when the leaves are down, and I don't have to worry about the penetration factor, very good for grouse too. What I'm gonna go with today is a load. It's a six shot. It's an ounce load. I want it to punch through this vegetation and get some penetration on the birds after it does so. So we're gonna go ounce load, six shot, 12 20, 12, 20 feet per second. And those are the two options we have for 20 today. We're gonna go a little heavier, start there. If we get into some more open areas, I'll probably revert back to the seven ace ounce load because it does not take a lot of extra oomph to kill the, the woodcock and the grouse. So just think about uh, when you hit the woods, just think about your surroundings, what you got for vegetation, because the most precise thing we want to do is bring these birds down and anchor them. So there you go. Fiocchi has a lot of options. And I'm going to go with the heavier load. Uh, just to follow up on what Tom was saying, they're going to shoot 20s. I'm actually going to shoot a 28 because I like it and it, it's very light. It's a shorter gun, get through the tangles with the vegetation that Tom had mentioned. And I'm actually going to shoot some golden pheasant loads, which I'm very familiar with. Uh, shoot them in my pheasant hunting operation, go through thousands of them a year. And the thing that I like is that they're nickel plated, so they will not only penetrate through feathers in the bird itself too, but I think it'll help probably punch through this vegetation a little bit. And the 28 is a super efficient little gun. I think a lot of people overlook it and think it's too small. So we're actually shooting a three inch shell. And even though it is a much smaller caliber, you know, the diameter of it, they're still shooting an ounce of 16 of lead coming out of it. So we're gonna give this a try and play the conditions and see what works best. We've got several options to choose from here. My dog's out, especially my old one. You know, he's Rosie you won't see him is a veteran of the grouse woods. She, may be gone. she gets a little excited sometimes, but overall, she does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Didn't even get a shot at it. Saw the bird briefly. She didn't push it. She did a good job. We had another grouse probably 60 yards later. Didn't even, he just blew out. Didn't even right. stick around. And then I heard Mark down on the bottom. Another here. Yeah. grouse, yeah. So what'll happen, folks, a lot of times with these birds, on a windy day or a morning after a windy day, they're pretty spooky. Is it because all the branches? All the branches. And, stuff and leaves coming down. Leaves coming them. down, you bet, bud. You hit the nail right on the head. That, that makes them really nervous. So it could be, we're gonna have to be on our toes is what I'm saying, okay? Not on our back, <laughs> All right. Easy. Here it goes! Yeah. Yeah. A 
good girl. All right, American Woodcock. Denny and I kind of double teamed her, so that was pretty fun. They're a very unique bird. Uh, this looks like a, a male, probably a local bird just by the size and everything. But uh, they have a lot of adaptations because they eat a lot of earthworms and vertebrates. So if you'll notice right at the end of their beak, that little knob on the end, mm -hmm. see that? Just a little bump. That That's so they can go down the hole, make sure they get that worm out of the ground. Kind of turn Just it. a little hook. Yep. Okay. And also, you notice where it gets black right here at the end? Yep. They can open that part of their bill without opening the rest of it. Ooh. So that that's a very unique thing. So if they got something bigger, they can reach up and clamp down exactly. on it and hold it. Yep. Now, do you notice where the eyes are? The eyes are set way back way on their head. Because when they're probing, they're probing like this. Yep, you see how uh, they can just see so just... they can get part of their head in there too. Yep, and then they can see up above just about right all the way around them. So that's an adaptation. Now, what I always found interesting, if you have your head down that much, how in the world do you get your blood flow? But these birds, their brain is cradled like this. Instead of like that, it's down lower okay, like so it that. Okay, so just naturally flows yep. in for them. Yep, and here's to me the most interesting one, and it's hard to see. Midwest Gundog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we have customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds. Make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Make your next day on the water even better with Airwave Pedestal, the only air suspension system that can be custom adjusted to the weight of the rider. No unreliable springs, no oil-filled shocks to leak. Our patented design utilizes a two-stage suspension system to smooth out the roughest ride, a limiting travel to an industry-leading two inches. This boating season, enjoy your time on the water to the fullest. Find out how at airwavepedestal.com. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. But their ears are right here. So they can hear the movement of the... See, see their ear? That they're after. Can you see that? Right yeah. there, that little hole? That's their ear. See, there's a better shot. Right. So they can actually hear what's Light in the ground. Yep. Or moving. Yep. I'll be darned. Yep. So, super, super unique bird. I love them. They're the, 
they're just awesome they're fun that generally people always say oh woodcock are easy to shoot well we've seen already today that's mm -hmm. a bunch of bs right. are they easier in grouse yeah but so is just about every other bird in the country um now the they're a shorebird that went rogue, basically. You can kind of see the shorebird legs. Mm -hmm. There's a shorebird of the upland, I call them. Okay. And, um, they, and these will migrate clear down to like Louisiana? Louisiana, right? Alabama, Texas. Down yep. in the swamps, yep. the same deal. Absolutely. So like uh, Louisiana's season is like, I think it's like January, February, because that's when they start arriving down there. And you'll notice the coloration. Without a dog, if you just toss this over there, never you'd have right. a never. Right. And we still lose a few yep. because, you know, they're, they're not huge birds, so they don't have a lot of scent. So when they do d get hit, they dissipate some scent, as most birds do when they're hit, and then it makes them tough to find. Mm -hmm. And then they have these three the crossbars. Yep. The three fingers of, of the Lord, they call them. Okay. And every woodcock will have that. Okay, male and female. You know, yep. So there's yep. not much differentiation between a male. Actually, and the female? female is bigger. I think they call it diamorphism. And uh, they'll they'll actually, if you hold the two side by side, you can tell the difference. Okay. And a female's bill will go. Take a dollar bill. Stick it in their bill. If it goes across, generally it's a female, and if it comes up just short, it's usually a male. Okay. Kind of an interesting okay. little thing, Doc. But yeah, dark meat. Marky has a great recipe for them. If we get enough of them, we'll try them tonight. Yeah, so, definitely. Well, we broke the ice, Danny. Yeah. Been a rough now, go so far, but like to be honest with you folks at home, this is one of the few years that me personally hasn't been in the woods since August one. It's just been too hot, and it's this is new to me. I don't know what's even, here for bird numbers. You can I didn't even see on the dog right now. Yep, she's plenty warm. She's plenty warm. It's hit, pushing sixty already. So, all right, let's go try to get Perfect. another one. Make some more American woodcock. Love them. Great little bird. Perfect. You got a mark on it, Danny? Take so, yeah. that mark, let me get in there. There it is. Here it is. That's your hand. Just tell me. Show it, show it. Show it, hey. Oh, one of those. Okay. Alright. This one's prettier than the last one. Cock. Cold. Mark that other bird. Charlie, right, good bird in here. There it is. Isn't that crazy? Yep, beautiful. What we're running into right now, folks, is the afternoon is heated up tremendously. And one of my most reliable dogs can't seem to pick up any scent at all. So we're pretty lucky that uh, Tanner found a feather and got us in the right area because she's coming up with nothing. She's bumped two, three birds. It happens. Um, it's got to be in the woods pushing close to 70 degrees with high humidity. It's it's ridiculous, but we're out here having fun. Picked up another woodcock, and uh, we're going to go try to get another one, see if she can actually find one on her own and point it. So anyway, we're going to give her a whirl. Beautiful birds. Good time. Thanks to Mark and Tanner for helping me find that bird. Whoa, easy. Mm. 
You got a good area? Easy. Right there, right there, Danny. Good girl. Hey. Right here. That's your boat. Oh, shit. Yep. You did hit it. Good girl, Kylie. That's your bird. That'd be about the right line. <coughs> now, that's why you have a trained dog. Dennis shot at this bird a while ago. We didn't think we hit it. This is exactly the same line that the bird was on. Kyla came out of the pond after drinking some water, and lo and behold, here it is. He smoked it, chased around a little bit, and we got it. So, super good job on a hot day. Yep. Where is he, honey? Easy. Nice old point. How the worm turns. She worked a grouse just a bit ago. She's had three, four solid points on woodcock. After she'd run over a couple when it was really heating up, either she adjusted or being down here a little further in the bottom has helped. Because now she's starting to have her birds pinned and things are going pretty good. I love these birds. Gorgeous little bird. High Point Pet Foods presents Country Creations Dog Foods, offering quality nutrition for the life of your canine companion. To feel the fire of puppyhood into keeping the energy level high of an active young dog, optimizing the performance of the hard-charging adult, or having a quality diet for your senior canine companion. Country Creations has you covered with their quality formulas. Get in touch with High Point Pet Foods today. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we have customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds. Make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. First one, I lost a lot of confidence in myself. Come on. Good bird, Kyle. Okay. So, 
We finally got a finally. golf body. And you can see, look at the iridescent colors. Right, it's just beautiful. You got greens and blues and all different kinds of colors there. And you can see why they call them the rough grouse. When they're displaying, it's that, that, puff that dart puffs out. Okay. And their their wings will their wings will beat towards their chest. A lot of people think they touch their chest, but they don't. They just make like a little tiny okay. sonic boom. Now a couple different things way to sex them. The old-fashioned way for years was if it's a solid band, it's a male. If there's a break, like right in here, it's a female. That always does not hold true. One of the best ways to tell, see all these little dots on the rump feather? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull one of these or a couple of them out until I get a good one. See those two white dots? Mm -hmm. Now, two, two dots, it's a male. If that bottom dot would have been gone and just a single, that would have been a, a female. Okay. So the band holds true in this case. It is a male. And you can kind of tell by his rough. I mean, he's a beautiful specimen. So two dots, a male. It, it's, a, it's a little bit bigger bird. Now, would this be a mature bird? Or? Yeah, that's, it, it's probably, an early hatch bird. Okay. Um, <clears throat> he has enough kind of a sharp primaries yet, so if they were really rounded, it'd be a little bit older bird. Okay. But uh, beautiful bird. And when they display that little feather right there, will stick up like that. Okay. So. We finally did it, yeah, buddy. Yeah, well, at least Woodcock saw his practice on now. Yes, <laughs> yes. But that's a beautiful, beautiful bird. Minnesota rough grouse. Hey, folks, we're just wrapping up this episode of Focus Outdoors Television. Northern Minnesota hunting rough grouse and uh, woodcock. More luck on the woodcock, per se. Yep. I'm a complete novice on the opposite end of the scale. We got Tom here, lifelong resident of the area, and this is what he does. Yeah. Kind of give us a rundown of the conditions, what we faced, what made it difficult, what we did wrong, what we did good. Well, you know, the big thing is in the heat, the grouse will lay low. That, that's, one of, that's one of the many things I found over the years that is consistent. It's one of the few things that is consistent with, with rough grouse and woodcock hunting. So we had to deal with that yesterday. Plus you can't get the good run out of the dogs when it's hot. Exactly. You know, we, we found the birds, the birds were low, they're around cool areas which makes it super tough because those cool areas are generally really thick, really brushy, and they give them a lot of security from the sun. And grouse do not like sun. So, and today, we get this big rain come in last night, and now today we've had winds as high as 35, 40 mile an hour gusts. And I'll tell you what, if you can get close to a grouse in those types of conditions, consider yourself lucky. Now we did a couple times. Um, the one time, according to our buddy Mark, we approached it all wrong, and he was probably right. Well, we didn't we, get the birds. No, no, we, <laughs> yeah. we should have took. We should have yeah. took a little more time and set it up. And but I think after working so hard, you get kind of excited and you forget exactly. the basics. Exactly. Try to find your shooting alleys, that kind of thing. Um, I don't think the migration. It is what September 30th today. I think. Please. I don't think the migration has even commenced whatsoever in this part of the part of the state. Now farther north. I know it has. So I would expect within the next week and a half to two weeks, folks, that we're going to have some pretty good bird hunting. So that will here. actually bring northern birds. It'll bring mix fresh in birds into birds. the area. Though the place we hunted today, I would expect once the flights start coming through of Woodcock, you can go on that piece of land, the very same land where we probably found five, six Woodcock today. Another thing, too, and I'll leave this to you. Dogs. What do the guys need to think about when they're bringing dogs? Well, if you're bringing dogs into this this uh, type of terrain, number one, bring a first aid kit. 
because you guys saw it. Everything pokes, scratches, and grabs you. And it does the same to the dogs. And another, make sure they're in shape. If you have a dog that's out of shape and you bring it into the woods, you are going to have major health problems. They're going to have pull muscles, they're going to be sore, you're going to get about a day out of them. Right. Now as far as pads and that go on their feet, it's pretty friendly. It's soft ground and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, but everything else is tough on dogs. And the big one is, make sure they respond and work with you. But today, we're actually in a very secluded area yeah. and this wind is flat man hawking all day yeah. long. And here, if you're going to hunt in windy conditions, especially like this, every once in a while you look up. Because there's widow makers, what we call widow makers. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, there's been more than once where I've either heard of people getting hurt or worse killed. Well, I've seen stuff come down off of close to me where I just wow. It's very dangerous when it's windy in the woods. Yeah. So, moral of the story is do a little research, but do not let it intimidate you. Because this is literally the second time I've been out here, and it's something I'm not going to stop doing. No, it's it's a it's a blast if you have the confidence and the tools to do it correctly. You know, another aspect to look at too is if you've got what you consider a good dog, whether it's a waterfall dog, you know, a lap type do all dog, or pointers like I run short here, you know, you can run any kind of dog up yeah. there and get more value out of your dog and get a lot more enjoyment following her up there. Right, right. If you're hunting a flushing dog, I think you would agree, you keep it tight. I mean, but we do it. We have little cockers sometimes we run and and people run labs, they see it all the time, and they're all very successful. Right. Get out and enjoy life. Yeah. Just stop sitting inside, afraid of everything. Spend a few bucks, support our businesses, and try your hand. Yep, and have fun.